In her next story, Claire Waring finds out why a family from the Philippines chose to immigrate to the United States and sees how one of them is adapted to life in Kansas. We've always talked about my mom always wanting to come here. I, I think she, she wanted to make that sacrifice for us kids, you know, a better opportunity and stuff. In America, sure, there's a lot of opportunities, but you really have to work hard in order for you to have a car, in order for you to have a decent place to live and, and pay your bills. Yeah, the opportunities are incredible here, but you have to work really, really hard to get it. Before 1965 and going back to the beginning of the century, there are lots of restrictions on Asian immigrants, uh, more so than, say, uh, European immigrants. In, in 1965, the immigration laws were liberalized so that uh, it was much easier for immigrants in general, and Asian immigrants specifically, to uh, come to the U.S. It was much easier to, for example, to bring family members over once an individual had established themselves in this country. So typically you'll find in post-65 Filipino immigration a fairly well-skilled individual who has come over because there's an occupational need or an occupational opening in this country, uh, and they could show that they could find work and, and support themselves. And then once, uh, once here, the laws were liberal enough that uh, it was easy to bring family members over and so what followed were often entire families and I think Ascension's family is typical in that sense and I think most post-65 Philippine immigrant families are like that. When my mom left, you know, we talked about her leaving and stuff but I was just a kid, you know, and you never really know in terms of the impact when, they, when they're gone. And I remember taking her to the wharf and, you know, we said goodbye, and, and, and it never really occurred to me until I, I, I came back to the convent that my mom left. And it was really, really weird. Like, mom left. My wife's name is Ascension Larba Simafranca, and uh, her nickname now is Toots, and everybody calls her Toots. She has Toots Schultz on her business card. A social worker in Lawrence, Kansas, Toots has been married to anthropologist Jerry Schultz for nearly 20 years. Toots and Jerry have two children. Toots' mother was a teacher in the Philippines, and she neared retirement. And uh, at that point in her life, she um, decided that she was going to come over to the United States uh, because I think she wanted to have a better life for her kids in the sense of uh, opportunities for them. So she came over to visit a pen pal. She already had relatives who already were here, and she stayed with them initially. And since she was a teacher, she was able to also find a teaching job. I was 14, and then, you know, Florence took care of us and my, and my grandma, and then the, the aunts and uncles. You know, my mom was gone, you know, I was like, wow. But there was still that extended family, that connection with people, that when you needed things, you know, there was, they were there for us. If you know the way the families operate in the Philippines, all sorts of different people, extended family members, live in the household and share a household. Uh, you, we might look at it almost like a communal arrangement, but in a sense it's the extended families kind of occupy the same space uh, and, and uh, take on different responsibilities. Toots didn't see her mother for three years. She was 17 when her mother sent for her. And within, say, the, the next decade, her whole family had pretty much come to the United States, her immediate family. And so by 1980, most of them had come here, had gone off and married, and had started raising their own families, and had dispersed across, you know, some live in California, some live in Virginia, some live in Wisconsin. All the family members living in the U.S. reunited for the first time in the summer of 1995 in Albuquerque, New Mexico. During the reunion with her mother, two brothers, three sisters, and other family members, Toots reminisced about some of the cultural differences she encountered when she first came to the United States. One of the things that I noticed, like at home, we have respect names for older people. You know, here, I can call somebody like 40 years older than me their, their first name, and it's okay. And then, so I, I, that was really kind of like a shocking to me. Like, my, my roommates would call her stepdad Howard, you know, instead of like dad, because I called my step my stepdad dad. If you're referring to uh, parents, for example, or somebody who's older than you, uh, Toots might refer to her older brother as Manung, which is a is a term of respect. Uh, she might refer to her older sister as Manung. 
uh, rather than by Tony or by Florence or what, whatever their real names are. These are all terms of respect. And it's really related to um, seniority, age, or that sort of thing. I think what I noticed is like the family structure, because I think a lot of, especially elderly, a lot of them are alone. A lot of them are, their kids don't live with them. Uh, there's really not an extended family around. I'm lucky that Jerry is very understanding that all these years I've had family members living with us. And I'm really lucky that he's able, that he, he supports me in that. Because I think not too many Americans would do that would accept that, that somebody would live with you and support them financially, emotionally, physically. She, more than I, perhaps, has tried to create a family, a larger family, and has really created kind of fictive kin, in a sense. She's, uh, you know, friends become part of the family, by uh, she labels them uncles and aunts and brothers and sisters and uh, nieces and, and cousins and things, lots of family terms get applied to friends and, and friends' family members. So in, in that sense, they become kind of part of the family. She's kind of creating a, an extended family in a way. In December of 1995, Toots and her family made a pilgrimage back to their home island, Bohol, in the Philippines. Her hometown of Baclayan was in the midst of the annual town festival, or fiesta. On Fiesta Day, basically, what's important is visiting family and friends and eating their food. And uh, you go to like four or five different places in one day and you have to basically eat something. It's impolite not to eat when you visit these folks. And everybody's doors open. Everybody, you can go into anybody's house, whether you know them or not, and, and uh, they, they have to share their food with you. And um, it's so central to the community there. And, and this is reflected in Toots. What I got out of it was I think I understood Toots a lot better. What comes from her background is uh, she's a very nurturing, home-centered, family-centered person. But it really does come out of her, uh, the heritage and the kind of conditions in that community. I have extended family here. My friends, you know, they are all my, my family. I think Filipinos are social people, I think, because we always get together at home. And I, I have maintained that I, I, I cook a lot at home, I feed a lot of people. I, I think that's how I grew up, you know? So I, I have maintained a lot of that. 